Okay, sports fans, this is a classic mini with hydroelastic suspension uh, that sprung a leak. And rather than try and fix the bags, which apparently is incredibly difficult to do, uh, I'm doing a wet to dry conversion, which means getting rid of the hydroelastic bags and putting in a coil spring suspension. Um, that's coming from Mini Mania. Um, but trying to figure out how to take this all apart was not easily done. So I'm going to make a video of what goes into it. Um, to start with, take off the 11 16th nut here. Easy enough. And now, use your uh, separator to pop these two apart. I guess I should add that uh, before you do anything else, you have to go to the back of the car where you would normally inflate the suspension and poke the little Schrader valve to totally depressurize the system. You don't want any pressure in your uh, in your bags there. So, have my uh, popper on here. And just going to tighten this down. Till it goes bang. Now notice I actually put the nut back on before I started pushing it down so things wouldn't go blowing apart and so I wouldn't damage the threads here. Okay, next we want to um, remove this upper control arm uh, which is held in place by a horizontal bolt and I pulled the one off the other side, which I've already removed. So you can see what this thing looks like. Um, on this side, it's held on by a three-quarter inch uh, nut. On the front side, it's got a plate that is held on by two seven-sixteenths nuts and bolts. And then it also has the same three-quarter inch nut uh, like on the other side. Um, so basically you need to remove the two seven sixteenths bolts, loosen up the three-quarter inch bolt that goes towards the front. On the back you need to remove that bolt completely. And then you're going to try and work it forward so you get get this out from behind the flange and then because this plate is unhooked you can actually tilt the whole thing forward, slide it up and remove the arm. So the first uh, nut and bolt, the 7 16th, comes out as a nut and a bolt. Okay, on the far side, it's not a nut and a bolt, it is strictly a, a bolt that screws into a threaded um, fitting. That's the good news. The bad news is it is a bitch to get to. Uh, the only way you could really get to it, or I could get to it, is through the hood, um, cramming my arm below the brake booster, and with my headlight I could just barely see the bolt where it was up in there and with a wrench you know doing the uh, 10 degrees at a time thing I finally unscrewed it. What a pain. Okay so now that we have the two bolts out um, 
I'm going to stick a screwdriver between the plate here and a hunk of steel here and try and wiggle it out. So the screwdriver goes in between those two and as you can hopefully see there's now a space opened up which means that back here the bolt is actually slid forward that way. Okay, so I'm going to keep working this forward. You can see the bolt slowly moving forward. And hopefully it will continue to do so. There's all sorts of brake pipes and all sorts of crap up under here, which is uh, making it interesting, but I need to keep moving it forward. So at this point, um, the bolt has cleared in the back back here. So now we can start moving this thing all around, which helps get the uh, plate out of the way of the brake pipes up here. And so it's just a question of moving it forward and wiggling the, the arm around until you can finally get the bolt all the way out and pull the arm out. Okay, now we're on to plan B. Basically, the plate at the end of this thing is running afoul of all the uh, brake lines up in there. So you need to get this nut off and get this plate off to get the bolt free to get the arm down. Uh, on the other side, the port side, um, you could pull this off, but things are too crowded over here. So I've locked some um, vice grips onto the threads here, not at the end because you want to be able to get the nut back on, but up here. So. That's what this is. It's locked on the threads, and that way I can unscrew the nut up here, get this plate off, and then hopefully get the whole uh, damn thing out. Okay, whoo, plate is out. Now I can pop this off, and hopefully slide the whole thing forward and get it out. Okay, plan C. After removing the nut, the plate, and this is like a big uh, washer here, now I am going to extract that bolt out the back, I hope. Okay. Well, that was fun and easy. So on the other side, you can go forward, but apparently on this side, it will only come out going backwards. Okay, now that we've got that out and we have the upper control arm loose, as it were, next thing is to get the cone, well, technically out from the bag, although if we can't do that, we will go to plan B, which is just get the whole bag off. Okay, well, I'm having issues separating my cone from the bag, which is... You can see the back there. But either way, this metal ring here is what holds the bag. And this has to come out of this. So basically, this is car. This is part of the bag. Oop, this is part of the bag. So it won't just come straight down. It actually has a couple little pins that stick out 
So you have to unscrew partially, or at least a couple degrees, the ring here to get it to drop down. Um, I should add that up on top, where you would consider a shock absorber to mount, there are two bolts holding it, as well as the um, pressure hose. So you have to undo the pressure hose or cut the pressure hose and undo the two bolts. Okay, so what I did is I put my little baby vice grips here, and then I hit it with a hammer, and you can see it's actually it was spinning. Um, now the other real tricky part that I miss completely is behind the control arm up against the back wall here there is a plate with two Phillips head screws that hold this whole thing in. So you, you have to go back to the back wall, go up, and you will find two Phillips head screws that need to be removed, and a plate will come out, and then the whole thing will come down. Okay, so here's the plate. It had the two screws that was behind all of this. So now, I'm going to see if it'll come out. Okay, there it is. The bag with his hose. Okay, so you can see now where those two Phillips head screws were. So the plate was way back up in there. And this flange helps hold the uh, hydrostatic bag in place. So until you remove that plate, it's not coming down. So this is the bag and you can see how it has these um, tabs and that's why you have to twist the whole thing to unhook the tabs from up inside the quote unquote, sh quote -unquote shock tower. Um, now the hose does have a, a screw fitting um, that you can see up under the hood, but because of brake lines, it's impossible to get to. So since I was, the whole thing was coming out anyway, I just cut the hose. But again, make sure you depressurize the system before you start cutting hoses. Otherwise, you'll have otherwise you'll have high pressure fluids shooting everywhere. So when I talked about the two bolts up on top. Um, we're going to go with the uh, port side rather than the starboard side because they're easier to see. Um, but basically, you can see hole there, hole there. So that's where the two bolts need to come out. And in the center is where the uh, pressure hose comes up. Um, so you either have to cut that or unscrew it from the fitting, and that will drop down. Now in the rear, you have to start by pulling the gas tanks part way out, um, which I've already done here. Basically, there's a strap that connects to another strap with a bolt. Undo those, and then try and work the tank out from the sides. This car has one on both sides. Um, and you have to get the filler neck out to the hole. And the whole reason you're doing all this is uh, ha, ha. Um, you can't oh, you can't see it. There is a 
You can see the thing that looks like a washer with a hole in the center there. Um, yeah, right there. That is where a spring comes up through. Um, so basically, this spring attaches behind the, uh, the swing arm here with just a clip. Um, goes over a little shaft and there's a little spring clip that holds it there. But up at the top, it's got this annoying nut. So there's a flattened um, top there, which it is tiny. I don't know what wrench would fit it. Um, but basically you have to squeeze behind the gas tank and what I did was put a uh, set of vice grips on the flats and the nut is a half inch and you have to slowly work the half inch nut away. Now the good news is as it starts to drop down this way, this um, It almost looks like a uh, metal washer here, uh, but it's fixed in place. When that appears and you can actually get to it, you can snap vice grips on that, and then that's a lot easier, and you can work the nut from above till the whole thing pops down. Um, so that's getting the damn spring off. Um, then it's the airbag time. And the airbag hooks up to a shaft. And so as this swings up and down, it moves this shaft back and forth into the bag and the shaft is made up of several pieces and here's my airbag from the other side the actual shaft from the airbag that goes into fits this this fits inside the pipe like thing back here um, and it's as you can see, it's relatively short. So what I found, and I've already disconnected it and reconnected it back up for the purpose of the video, but what I found worked the best was, of the 8,000 ways I tried to disconnect this, is I had a pry bar and another pry bar, and I put the one pry bar on the end of the metal pipe like thing and I put the other pry bar up inside the bag and I don't know if you'll be able to see this but basically if I push the bag up inside I can get that shaft out of the pipe make the whole thing pop out. Now, believe it or not, this does work. So, once you disconnect that from the pipe, um, the bag itself is just like the front ones, um, you have to twist it to unhook the uh, tabs it has around the edges, and then it just pulls away from the chassis here. Um, and the pipe is, you can actually pull off it's attached to a um, like a ball joint and the whole thing pops off if you wanted to.